we're going to be building two different robots. We're going to use one with the new V5 system and one with the old Cortex system. And the Cortex robot is going to be focused on getting the caps onto the high posts and the V5 system is going to be focused on shooting the balls into the flags. The max score of VEX turning point is 45 points and those are relatively equally distributed between flags, caps, parking, and the autonomous bonus. Flags are worth 15 points total, caps are worth 14, and the parking bonus can be either worth 9 or 12, depending on if you can park two robots on the center platform. Uh, the cap robot can also get the three bottom flags without having to shoot a ball, so that gives a little bit more advantage to a cap-only robot over a ball-only robot. What we're trying to do right is have an intake that would basically be able to right here, uh, pull it. off the uh, pole on both sides. Right so what we're trying to do is have a pneumatic a clamp that would noise. clamp like this to actually grab it um, and go up so we could pull off like that or like that. Um, so we could basically so we could basically pull off in any orientation we really want to, depending on where we're positioned in the game. We're team double catapult. It's, we've been doing not that and doing this instead. Got this fired. Yeah. So our uh, our holder here, the piece of custom Lexan, the ball is just slot into. Fire. Okay, so right now I'm mounting our puncher, and the way this is going to work is it's just going to punch the balls forward. So we're going to have a ball load from the, down here up into this little basket that I made, and this ram is going to pop back and it's going to shoot forward and smack the ball uh, against the flags, and hopefully that'll get us uh, where we need to get it. So. All right, so the first thing we tried was making a catapult, right? And it worked pretty well. We used some rubber bands to uh, tie, uh, tension it back, and we used a slip gear to release it. And then once we mastered the single catapult, we then did a double catapult. And so the pros of the catapult are it's pretty easy to get down. Uh, it's somewhat reliable at a certain distance. And the, some cons are it's hard to draw back and it's not really accuracy reliable. Alright, so the next design we try is a flywheel. Uh, so we tried the flywheel and it's basically where balls, they just go around a spinning wheel and they launch at the flags. It's all nice. Uh, and some pros are that it can it's nice and accurate and also you can adjust uh, your target so you can either shoot for the top flag or the bottom flag. Some cons are the speed up time so it can take a while for the wheel to speed up and also the recovery time in between shooting balls. Alright so the third design we tried is our puncher. So it's basically just this guy with that and that, that and the ball. So a uh, puncher is basically a piston or slip gear that punches a ball towards the flags. So some pros are is is pretty small and you can use pneumatics and uh, slip gears or slip gears. Um, and some cons are it has limited range and it's not really that accurate. So it's about 5 p.m. on day one. We've got the drive base done. We tested it earlier on a pretty dead battery. Uh, we were waiting for some other ones to charge, but it worked. It made it up the ramp. We weren't sure if the six-wheel drive would have issues uh, climbing, but it seemed to work. It worked really well. Uh, we dropped the wheels down on pillow blocks so that we would have more clearance on this C channel here and it doesn't hit. Uh, originally it was a drop center and the middle wheel was two washers lower, but that was actually making things worse. Uh, so we took it off and now all of the wheels are in line with each other and it works pretty well. Right, so um, for the intake system for the V5 robot, uh, we kind of been working on it. Uh, we're trying to use only one motor because they're so powerful, it's not worth using two motors for something so small. Um, so it has two stages right now. 
It's kind of like a nothing but net one. It's a big roller intake at the front that kind of sucks them up like this. And then like a second little indexer back here that pulls them down there and into the flywheel. Um, and we to get them to work off one um, one motor only, we're using the this one to suck it up into this little trough over here um, while this one spins backwards. Um, and these two are driven together by this motor um, to always spin in opposite directions. So they spin like this, keep the balls right here. Um, and then when we want to shoot, um, we spin out, um, which doesn't matter because these are already over here, so they can't be touched by this. But when we spin this one out, this one is spinning in, and so it sucks Wait, them up Aaron. into the flywheel. And then we're good. So when we were building the puncher, we realized that we needed to be able to use that second motor for our uh, cap flipper just so that it would make it a lot easier for us to do that and tie it together and make it all nice. Uh, so what we ended up doing instead is since now we can't power a ball launcher, we decided to make a small catapult that was just based on this lift arm. It's just a passive pin pulled uh, catapult that uh, would allow us to shoot the preload that we're given at the beginning of the match. Uh, so when we lift up to deploy stuff, it pulls that pin and launches the preload. So it's the morning of day three and we've got the arm done and we're working right now on putting pneumatics on the claw. We did a little bit of testing late last night, uh, but we still have to wire most of the encoders and stuff on the arm. We've got the string bars done, so these two intake pods are independent of each other because the cap needs to go through both sides, meaning that they have to be linked mechanically down here on the arm. Uh, so the two motors are right here and here. We've got these pulleys. These are 36 tooth gears. And then they go up to the 60 tooth gears here. Uh, we lathed out the middle of the 60 tooth gears to make the pulleys. And uh, since these ones are offset slightly, the string has to be routed through some uh, tensioners here, uh, so it goes through here and then up to the pulley, and uh, as you can see when this spins it rotates both sides of the intake at the same time. We've got a encoder on there for that, and one in, on the arm, and the deploy is all good. <coughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. Supposed to actually do Let's go. Shut up. <laughs> All right. So, wait. I'm I'm filming right now. Hey, hey, Ron. Wait, I'm filming. It's one right here. Okay. So, um, we had a problem with the flywheel not having enough kinetic energy to transfer to the ball, so the ball wouldn't go fast enough or high enough. So uh, we decided to uh, make it a little heavier and increase the uh, rotational inertia. First thing we did was we added more wheels. Um, so this is three four-inch wheels next to each other. Um, and there's a couple standoffs inside, which may help make it a little heavier too. Um, there's also a high-string shaft, which not only helps with the rotational inertia, but also helps with um, just not bending here, which can happen when it's really heavy. Um, and the other thing we tried, um, it's not on the robot right now, because we took it off, but um, we geared up a separate flywheel on the side here, which is this. Um, <laughs> It's like a little blade with weights on the edge, um, and it was just supposed to spin really fast. I think the edge speed was like 150 miles an hour, um, and basically since it was geared up faster, it could be really light, but have a ton of inertia. I do it in the side. Okay, so with the V5 robot, we're going to be using the vision sensor to auto-aim. So we, we selected the red portion, and then we selected the green portion, and we created a color code of red and then green. And then for the blue flag, we use the same green portion and the blue portion, and then green and then blue. And then this tells us where the flags are, and then we can turn the robot to the correct angle and drive away to the correct distance to shoot and hit the flag perfectly. Go. All right, so we just finished up our intake. Uh, it's going to be active out and pass it, pass it back.
uh, via rubber bands and it fits perfectly and aligns the cap pretty well so it holds the cap in the center and when we uh, tilt it which I can't do right now because I'm holding it up here uh, it holds it pretty perfectly so we're pretty happy with it